Welcome in guys, Austin here, and today I'm gonna teach you how to play traditional grip. I've been getting a lot of requests for this recently, so I'm gonna break it down and show you pretty much everything I know. Now I'm not gonna get into the debate between traditional and matched in this video. We can definitely start that debate down in the comments if you want, but instead I really just wanna focus on traditional technique itself and show you how to get into it if you're serious about learning it. Now before we get into the actual grip itself, the first thing you need to address is your snare drum positioning because it's gonna be dramatically different than what you're gonna do with match grip. With match grip, usually you're gonna keep the snare much lower and flatter from left to right with maybe a slight angle coming back to you. And that makes sense because it's an even grip in the hands. But whenever you switch over into traditional, now you can see the stick is much higher and it's got a more dramatic angle coming down with that left stick. So this low flat position doesn't really work anymore for traditional. So if you don't know this already, uh, traditional was originally designed to play a marching snare drum at an awkward angle across the body like this, as opposed to trying to come at it from here. They just started switching it around to play it like this. So I think it makes sense to try to recreate that a little bit with your snare drum. So what I would recommend doing is actually bringing the snare drum up a lot higher than you normally would and trying to angle it down and away from you just a little bit. And a good height to shoot for is right around your waistline. So if you take your stick and put it on your waistband there, that's a pretty good height to shoot for. And we're trying to find an angle that matches this natural angle of the stick. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring this snare drum up here. Right now it's set for match, but I'm gonna bring it up and try to dial it in for traditional grip. All right, you can see the snare drum is much higher now, so it's right around my waistline. That's a pretty good height to shoot for. And what you're trying to find is that optimal height where you can hit rim shots without your hands hitting your legs, okay? Now, in terms of the angle, what I like to do is loosen up the snare drum stand and I highly recommend you get a snare drum stand that has a ball head on it like this. You can go in any direction. I hate the ones that have uh, fixed steps in a certain direction. Those drive me insane. So if you can get a ball head snare drum stand, that's gonna make it a lot easier. So what I recommend you do is just sit upright in a nice natural position, bring your left hand up, and then you just want to try to find the angle that matches that stick. And you don't have to go super dramatic with it, but you just want it to go kind of down and away from you at the same angle as your left stick. So for me, that's right around, right around there. So that feels pretty good to me. So I just go ahead and lock that in there. And you'll probably need to move it back to center it up a little bit. But that, feels pretty good. So now, when you do this, you don't have to drop your left shoulder so much to hit rim shots. I prefer to keep everything upright and neutral and then just change the angle of the drums so I can stay upright like this. All right, now that you have the snare drum positioning dialed in, we can go ahead and get into the actual grip itself. So you just wanna start by sitting upright in a nice neutral position. Let that left arm hang naturally and then just bring your forearm up like this parallel to the ground and palm facing inward. And this is your starting position for traditional grip. With the stick, you wanna find the, the balance point, which is usually right around this position. On these uh, Vic Firth sticks, it's usually right around that flag point, but you're trying to find the optimal position where the stick wants to bounce back naturally. If you go back too far, it's just gonna die on you. And if you go up too high, it's not gonna have enough weight in the front to come back down. So you wanna to experiment to find that optimal point, but for me, it's right around that flag point there. So you just wanna start right here, take your balance point, and you wanna put it right in this webbing between the thumb and the rest of the hand. Put it deep in there and then just squeeze between the thumb and the rest of the hand. And make sure that the stick is in the center of the head here. And this is your starting position. So you wanna get control from here. And what I recommend doing is just making full strokes by rotating the forearm like this. This is the main difference between match grip and traditional. With matched, the movement is like this from the wrist, and with traditional, it's a forearm rotation like this. So if we start from here, we can just do full strokes, thumb only, rotating the forearm. 
and you want to get a full rebound coming back, you just want to get control over this movement. Make sure the stick isn't sliding around or doing anything weird. Okay, so once you get control over this, then you can move into thumb only strokes. So now, instead of rotating the forearm, I'm gonna keep this pretty stationary and I'm just gonna be using the thumb to bounce the stick. And that looks like this. You just wanna get control over this movement right here and take your speed up and just get control, make sure you're not sliding around or doing anything weird there. So those are your two starting control points, full forearm rotation strokes, and then thumb only bouncing. All right, and that's where you start. The next step is to position the rest of the fingers around the stick, and I'm gonna give you two different variations here. I've studied a lot of drummers over the years and analyzed their uh, traditional techniques, and I've noticed that they all fall in one of two categories, and it's what I like to call open or closed traditional. So I'm gonna show you uh, both variations here. We'll go ahead and start with what I call open traditional. So with open, the stick is gonna rest uh, pretty close to the edge of the ring finger, so right on the back of the fingernail is a pretty good place for that. So it sits right about there. And the index finger is gonna come down and go right on top there. And these are your two main control points in this open position. So the index finger gives you some of the control on top for the finger control. And the ring finger gives you the support from the bottom, like this. With the pinky finger, you can just tuck it underneath the ring finger and the middle finger can just come down and rest naturally on the top for a little added support. But the fingers are pretty straight. They're not curled back in any kind of weird way. So that's why I call this an open traditional because the fingers are pretty relaxed and it's a more open kind of grip. Now, you can start to get used to the feeling of just rotating the forearm and coming up like this, making full strokes. And one of the great things about this open position for me that I've noticed is it's really good for this kind of karate chop motion from the top like this, as opposed to just a forearm rotation. You can move from the elbow and really chop down like this. So if you need to make like powerful rim shots and things like that, you can do it from the elbow with like a karate chop motion coming down here. And with the finger control, it's mainly gonna be coming from the index finger and the thumb. So they're kind of touching just a little bit here. And that position is where you can bounce the stick from. But it's mainly coming from the index finger there. But you can go pretty fast from there. That combo of the thumb and index is pretty fast. So I associate this open variation the most in my mind with Vinny Kaliuta. If you watch any of his older videos from back in the day, you can see that he usually keeps a pretty open traditional grip. <laughs> So the other variation is what I like to call a closed traditional grip. So now, if we start in this open position, we can curl all the fingers back a little bit like this, and now the stick is much deeper into the fingers, and this is what I like to call a closed traditional. So now the stick is resting in between these two joints on the ring finger as opposed to up here. So now it's further down there, and the two fingers can come around on top here. And that's really the main advantage of this position is you get that finger control on top with those two fingers. So this is a, a popular variation as well. A lot, of, a lot of great guys use this. 
And this one, I feel like it's more of a forearm rotation position as opposed to a karate chop. I, I don't really karate chop when I'm in this position. I usually go open for that. But this one definitely gives you um, more control with those fingers on top. So it's really a matter of what feels right to you. With this one, I associated most with Virgil Donati. If you watch his videos, he plays a pretty uh, closed traditional grip where the fingers are much more uh, curled back, the two fingers are on top, and it's deeper into the hands here. So you got Vinny and you got Virgil, and in my mind they're kind of the two extremes, but they're two of the best drummers of all time, so both of these variations work. It's really just a matter of what works the best for you. So now I'm going to give you a few exercises to work on that will help you develop a little more control here. And the first one is what I like to call the four point control exercise. So we have four different positions we can use to, to move the stick or bounce the stick in traditional. And position one, we covered right in the beginning, that's the thumb only strokes. Okay, that's position number one. Position two is thumb and index. All right, position three is the two fingers on top, so index and middle, primarily using those to bounce the stick. And position four, we're actually gonna rotate the forearm, go palm down, and use the, the two fingers on top to bounce the stick like that. Okay, so we got four different positions there. Thumb, thumb and index, index and middle, palm down. Thumb, thumb and index, index and middle, palm down. And you just wanna be able to move seamlessly in between all four of those. That's definitely gonna help you develop that tactile feedback and that control no matter what kind of grip you use or what position you're in. The next exercise is to just work on your basic molar pumping motions. And if you don't know about the molar stroke yet, it's essentially just a way to get multiple strokes out of one movement so you can play a little bit looser and a little bit faster. So in traditional here, if we want to play the three stroke variation, we got down, tap, and then up. So the elbow comes out a little bit and the palm goes a little bit down for that up stroke and then it whips for the down stroke. So down, tap, up, down, tap, up. And you want to stay pretty loose with this. That's kind of the point of it. And as you speed up, the movement gets a little bit smaller. And it's mainly just coming from here. That's where you're controlling it from. Okay, so that's your molar pumping motions with groups of three. That's a really good one to work on. And you can also just do uh, groups of two if you wanted to. So down, up, down, up, down, up. So that's a really good one to work on as well. And you can also work on your pull-out accents. And a pull-out accent is basically just a low stroke and then an accent directly after it. So if you're in triplets, you could play the first and the third triplet. So one triplet, one triplet, one triplet, one triplet. That's one of the, you know, advantages of playing these molar strokes is being able to whip out those pull out accents. 
And that's what it looks like in traditional grid. And that has a lot of carryover into your double stroke roll. So instead of accenting the first note and letting the second note bounce out, which is what a lot of people do, like that, now you can kind of invert that a little bit if you can develop these molar strokes. So now your double strokes can have a little more um, presence on that second stroke to make it sound a little bit more even. And you can do groups of three, so one, two, three, one, two, three. That's a really great pattern to work on to develop uh, double strokes with your left hand. It's just right, left, left. And you want to make sure it's not like that. You want them low and even. Okay. And just straight double strokes. All right, guys, I hope that sheds a little more light on traditional grip for you and gives you some new ways to think about it and some new exercises to help you develop a little more control with it. Now, the thing about traditional is you can't half-ass it and you can't do it part-time and expect to get good at it. If you really want to master it, you got to just adopt it full-time as your grip from here on out. Check back in five or ten years and then maybe you'll have it down because that's pretty much what it takes to master traditional grip. Okay, so that's my advice for that. And if you want a really great uh, hand workout to test your hands in both traditional or matched, definitely check out my last video, which is the Creative Pad Patterns Workout. It's a full guided hand workout system. It's about 35, 36 minutes long. Comes with a free PDF guide, which you can download. I'll have that linked below. So definitely go grab a copy of that and test your skills by playing along to that full video and see if you can keep up. All right, that's gonna do it for this one. Thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and I will see you in the next one. Take care.